united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, El Paso, Juarez, uh, New Mexico, and Wyoming. Uh, glad you could join us today on June 29th's version of United with Christ. We're so grateful for Channel 38 Live Christian Broadcasting giving us this opportunity for local pastors and churches to just kind of share what's going on. And uh, today I have more of an informative uh, uh, show today because I have a good friend of mine, Pastor Dale Walker with Heart for the World Church out of Las Cruces. And he's gonna be sharing about an upcoming event, 50th anniversary, it's a real exciting thing. And I'll go to him in a minute. I wanna remind, if you have questions or prayers, the prayer line is 915-532-8518. Again, 915-532-8518. If you have prayer requests, last week we did have one, or if you have any questions about the upcoming event. So it's my, my pleasure this time to present to you my co-host today and good friend. We're married, uh, our, his oldest daughter is married to my oldest son, and so we're kind of bound together whether we like it or not, <laughs> right? But Dale Walker uh, goes back a long way, and I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you talk about the upcoming event, the Jesus, uh, El Paso Jesus movement. Well, I'm just very excited, so excited that uh, to celebrate something that happened, April 7th, 1971, the small group of, of young people uh, began actually a, a fellow by the name of Buzzy Parks was strung out on drugs coming back from San Antonio wow. and he thought he was going to die and he called out to God and was suddenly delivered and healed. When he got back, a good friend named David Jackson had been saved. Now these are the hippies, these are, you know, really long haired kind of stoner type <clears throat> people. But these two guys suddenly... Uh, found the Lord. Wow. And uh, it was funny because I have this childhood memory. They drove around in a hearse with <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, like, you know, you better get your life right. <laughs> but the next thing you knew, uh, they began to gather at Will Davenport's house, and every night these uh, young people came. Wow. It ended up in something called Friday Night Jesus Chapel, in which over uh, the next two years, well over 2,000 teenagers wow. were saved. So, so much of the history of what happened in the charismatic movement in El Paso mm -hmm. with ties to, you know, Abundant Living Faith Center, uh, Vino Evo, Jesus Chapel, uh, even an impact of St. Francis, all these many, many uh, churches will tell you that something happened in those early 70s, and we refer to it as the Jesus Movement. Mm -hmm. And what was on my heart a few years ago was that this came the Jubilee year, yes. this 2021, and that we're going to uh, celebrate September uh, 20. Uh, fourth, twenty-fifth, and twenty-sixth, mm -hmm. uh, the fifty-year fiftieth celebration of the wow. Jesus Movement. That is really interesting. I, I've not lived through. Uh, I came to El Paso in '84, so I don't know revival like that. We pray for revival, but it was just kind of a spontaneous move of God, right? He just began drawing people and drawing people, and you met at. Uh, well, where you're meeting on Friday night, the uh, is it St. Paul's? St. Paul's Methodist was was one of the main places. Yeah, you guys met there. That's 7,000 Edgemere, and that'll be Friday yeah. night. You're gonna and be we'll meeting. go back there on that Friday night, the 24th of September. That's interesting. And, and did God bless St. Paul's also because he opened his yes, door? Yes, there was a, an amazing pastor there. Uh, Leonard Cunning, he, he opened his doors and took a risk. I know his board. Uh, <laughs> you you got to get a picture of this in those days. Uh, groups of people would come. We'd truck loads from Fort Bliss, but then a lot of these street people. And instead of, I remember one of the times, instead of taking up an offering, they just put trash cans. By the end, it was filled with drugs, uh, marijuana, and so forth. What was interesting is that the police at that time would actually... Um, go and find people that were in trouble and take them down to St. Paul's 
because they thought, well, this might help them and pushed them in there and uh, they would get saved. That is incredible. Yeah, I heard someone tell me that back then it wasn't, if someone came, they might get saved. They said, if you could get them there, they were going to get saved. Exactly. You know, and, and it's just so foreign to most of us today to see that. You know, we, we labor so hard now in the fields to uh, hopefully bring uh, people to Christ. And it's just such an exciting thing that that's happened on there. Uh, talk a little bit about the Jesus movement. Talk a little bit about it. Yeah, and this is, and let me just give you the bigger picture, Mark. You know, the bigger picture of this is that Jesus is still moving. Amen. And, you know, here's a verse in Psalm 145, 3 to 7. It says, Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. And what it says is that when you have a testimony of God, you're to tell the next generation. Yes. But there's to be an expectation. And many of us believe this post-COVID time, is a time when the Lord is going to stir people. You know, mm. going back to the Jesus movement, if you remember the late 60s, again, uh, many people weren't, weren't born then. <laughs> but it was a devastating time. You know, Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, then Robert Kennedy, the Vietnam War, the protests. Yeah. I mean, the parents of that generation mm -hmm. said, what happened to our kids? They're all going, yeah. you know getting strung out and in the middle of it, you know, God is dead movement, all of that in the middle of it, you know, the Bible says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And God used the most unlikely people. Yeah. Now, not a single one of these And what I loved about the Jesus movement, my parents and others came, but they did not lead it. They sat in the back. It was the teenagers. It was, uh, people straight off the streets and but touched by God and and began to share so what happened was this was taking place at the same time there was a move you know the church in El Paso was birthed there was again I mentioned God was moving with Charles Neiman Jack Connor all these people yeah and but my my wing of it was all these teenagers and so we began to come on Friday night uh, what well, was beautiful, my parents had been involved in First Baptist Church, and, and they were so kind. They, they weren't sure what to do with all these hippies exactly, but they had a beautiful house that was like a mission mm -hmm. over there near UTEP and on Prospectors, and they gave it to the Jesus people. It was, we turned it, I mean, they, they loaned it. We yeah. just, they were renting it to us, but uh, they paid for it, but it was called the House of Living Water. And so at the same time, you'd have this big Friday night uh, service. People would be sitting on the floor. They went from church to church and, and packed it out. And then on Saturday night, we'd go and evangelize and have a potluck and then have the House of Living Water. People came, as I said, from everywhere and found God just on the spot, uh, just out of out of the streets, you yeah. know, one of my elders today, you would never have imagined, you know, <laughs> Russ Yeager, he, he, he didn't wear shoes for years, but he came and he got saved. Next thing you know, he's there at the house and, and God is moving on that. I'm at uh, Burgess High School at the time, just a kid, sophomore, didn't know what I was doing, mm -hmm. but we just began to tell people about Jesus. Ended up with like a hundred kids coming at lunchtime. Yeah. And as you said, every single one of them, if we could get them to Friday night, <laughs> they would get saved. Wow. So we would uh, bribe them, do all kinds of things, tell them there's pretty girls there, whatever it took. <laughs> but if they went there, God would meet them. It was powerful. Do you, you mind telling the story how you got anointed in leadership because of your qualifications yeah. at the Bible study? <laughs> yeah, we tried to figure out, and, and everybody asked, uh, who should be the leader of this? And and, and so they asked, how long have you been saved? And one guy said, three days. One guy said, a week. I said, well, I've been saved for a, a full 30 days. 
They said, you're the leader. So that's how I was you're, called you're, to the ministry. You're the you know? man. <laughs> it's awesome to see God can move, can he? Yes, uh, he we, can. we saw a little bit in the Philippines years ago. Yes. Remember when they prayed for leaders to come forward and all these kids came forward yes. and that's who God brought forward, right? The, the most unlikely. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is uh, those that have strayed away. Yeah. And you kind of felt like God had put on your heart. And, and I, I do believe this too, that, you know, Paul said, sadly, many walk with us are walking no more. Yeah. And do you see like there's a, a calling back or there a type really is. thing? I, two things that I felt about this event, you know, one is I feel like that some of us are called to be stewards of revival. In the Old Testament, yeah. the, you know, the Lord would, would they, they had lit the, the altar, the fire, but the priests were to keep it stirred yes. up. And I've always felt like I was to stir up what the Lord had done. And as, as this 50-year anniversary approached, obviously... Uh, we're not getting any younger, yeah. those baby boomers. And I had a dream about two years ago of this ship. And it was, it was, it was kind of dark, stormy, and heading towards shore. And it was kind of like a Titanic mm -hmm. picture, you know, of uh, people needing rescue. Mm -hmm. And we began to, uh, to go and, and lift people up. And it was almost like, it was almost like the last horn was sounding, uh, yeah. the last chance, and as as the harbor was opening, and I felt in a deep way. First of all, I feel a deep burden for the baby boomer generation, my generation, okay. and uh, as many of them are moving into their later 60s, 70s, and so forth, um, some of them never got to experience the yeah. Jesus movement, and in my heart. I just feel like the Lord says, I want to, I want to give them another chance. Throw out the lifeline. Others, as you mentioned, uh, they, they tasted it, but the seed was there, but it grew up and they got distracted yeah. and, and they went their own way. But I believe the Lord wants to call the prodigals home. I was uh, ran into someone. She knew me from those days. Wow. Now, not only she's not following the, you know, the Lord, like we'd say, she's a member of Wicca. She's, she's like, uh, as far away, I've left this all behind. But as I began to talk to her and I began to share with her and she began to remember, I could see literally tears coming to her eyes, her heart softening, because she remembered whatever that was, that crazy moment when she was in high school, where she felt God's love for her yeah. and was baptized in the Rio Grande and the whole thing, like so many were at that time. And I felt that it was a confirmation to me that there are many out there and they lost their way, but they, they remember. Yeah. And if there's a chance to just, just give them a chance to remember, hear about this, I believe many of them are going to come home to your the first world. love. You remember, Back, remembering yeah. your first love. I, uh, I talk about a lot. Jesus said, offenses must come. Of course, well, you know the parable of the seed. You know, some it's the stony ground. They, they don't have root or the, the thorns, the cares of this world. And, and, and people get offended. Yeah, and, and they're out there and, and they've forgotten their way. They've lost yeah. their way. What is it? You are weary, come home, sinner, come home yeah. type thing. And uh, it's hard to do that. I liked what you said to stir up to uh, you wrote here intentionally fan the flames, yeah. you know, and uh, Paul told that to Timothy. He said, you know, rekindle, fan those flames, that exactly. calling of that thing. When I laid hands on you, that gift, you know, Timothy, who we believe was a leader of the large churches of Ephesus, needed to fan into flame right. his calling. How much more do I and you? He yes, just fan absolutely. into flame, and, and the church need to fan into flame his uh, thing. Uh, I like this. I, you, Sunday night, you're planning like an impartation service. Right. And I think this is one of your anointings, by the way, that you mm -hmm. have a gift of impartation. You want to talk a, Friday yeah. night is going to be the meeting at uh, St. Paul's. Yeah, let me give you a yeah. breakdown yeah. on it. And by the way, I'll just say this is any of you, if you'd like to go to epjesusmovement at gmail.com, if you would send, uh, send me a note, epjesusmovement at gmail.com, I will send this to you. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram 
how Pastor Jesus moved. But the goal is kind of imagine Friday as the, the past, and Saturday yeah. the present, and Sunday the future. Okay. We, we've got a lot of things we're going to be sending out ahead of time. My brother Tommy Walker, some of you have heard of them. He's mm -hmm. doing a whole song list of the, the, the old Jesus okay. people songs. And, and if you'd like to get a, get a copy, that'll be free. We're, we're putting out te testimonies and, and so forth. We're sending out and, and okay. posting. But the Friday night, there'll be a hosting, a gathering for a lunch and a sharing. I can just tell you about the whole weekend. There's lots of worship because okay. if all else fails worship, that's been my <laughs> philosophy. Um, but it's going to be powerful worship because yes. uh, besides Tommy Walker, some of you may have heard of, of Chuck Gerard. Chuck Gerard mm -hmm. was the founder of Love Song, and he worked with Chuck Smith and back in California. Love Song was kind of the premier, uh, you know, at the time of yeah. the Jesus movement. They were the, the most kind of... The Bethel novel. Hill Song of the yeah. day. <laughs> and they, they came to El Paso in, in uh, I, I believe it was about January 72, and literally thousands of, of young people came to the Lord. And so, in fact, some of you know, Tommy, that's when his heart was stirred. You oh, know? great. I didn't know but, that. But uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that we have. So we have these amazing musicians. So Friday night will be kind of a, a reunion type with the old-time Friday night service. Saturday, we're in the process of trying to rent and have a Jesus festival okay. <laughs> that will feature these many bands most likely at McKelligan Canyon Amphitheater. Okay. And we're inviting the whole city for uh, afternoon, evening of just worship songs. And it will also be a chance for people to really meet the Lord. So Saturday will be a, a, a really fun thing. And then Sunday, we'll meet at Hope City out there in Northeast. Okay. And in that evening, that's the impartation service. That's kind of the future. Mm -hmm. And it'll be neat to recognize um, not only... Uh, some that, that pioneered, but the sons and daughters of revival and the grandsons, because yes. what's happening is amazing. Yes. The third generation of yes. what they're doing. But it's also for many of us who, who were part of that or, or other movements since that to just pray over and bless the children, and the grandchildren, uh, because the best is yet to come. The best of the move of God in El Paso and the borderland is yet to come. I love that because we, we talk about the golden age or whatever, and right. we always want to look back, but you're right. And I love that you you men, you preach that, you mentor it, you live it. The best is yet to come. You know, that was good, but God's incredible. I love that he, like you said, he took the least likely. Right. Uh, you know, I think now as parents, when they look back and their kids' long hair smoking pot against the war, they probably thought the Antichrist right. is around the corner. They can't get any worse than this. Boy, did we not know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and God reached out and took the unlikeliest. You, you use a phrase, and if you, uh, God's going to do amazing things with unamazing people, or what's the, yeah. do you remember that phrase? You, you, well, yeah, God's going to do extraordinary things with ordinary people. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, and he's going to anoint us far beyond our intelligence. <laughs> He'll give us favor. And that's what it is. His grace yes. is ready to pour out. You know, I just feel one of the things that makes this extremely special, and I'm just sharing this because I'd love for other pastors to hear. Uh, in fact, I received a uh, prophetic word from some prophets, and they just said, God is building a circle of unity in this city. Oh, man. And, and that the key is, as, as the circle of unity is coming together, uh, as he's one, he's going to pour his glory out. And I think the most extraordinary thing about those revivals was all the walls came down. I mean, uh, yeah. St. Paul's Catholic Church, they began to bring wow. huge numbers of, of young people. One of the... It was such an interesting, you know, there was no organization, as it were, but there were spiritual elders of that movement. Yeah. Paul McEachern was a four-square pastor. Um, but he was as close as, as could be to a Father Thomas, who's a yes. Catholic priest and who took us to, to the dump in what is. And he was just so, such a blessing. Yeah. And, you know, and then there was the Episcopal uh, Church. And yeah. uh, right alongside of that were the Baptists and all of this. And God was just showing us that he, he wants his church back and he Amen. wants it without walls and without, without our divisions. 
And, and I, I feel like that this is something that because it, it literally leveled it. I know I'm from Las Cruces and I, I hear the stories there. It, it came in the Catholic Church as powerful as it did yes. in the Protestant Church. No. And it, again, you it mean wasn't the Gentiles about a, can be saved <laughs> also, didn't they? <laughs> it, it, yeah, they were ahead of us. But the yeah. idea was uh, the Catholic charismatic. And then people just said, hey, it's just about Jesus. You know, yeah. it's, it's what it's all about is Jesus. And it created a, a synergy so we could do stuff like at high school. It didn't matter what church you went to. Everybody just came yeah. to, to worship Jesus. I love that. I love that. You had the vision of the ship. I've always seen it as... I see it as lifeboats, you know, New Wine Fellowship's a lifeboat, Heart for the World's a lifeboat, Hope City's a lifeboat, you know, uh, St. Clement's is a lifeboat, all of them, all, you know, all my friends' churches, Prince of Peace, so for my brother uh, Michael, uh, is, yeah. a, is a lifeboat, and we're, we're here to pick up the stragglers, and if I can, if I'm busy picking up stragglers, come help, come help pick exactly. up stragglers, and, and that unity does seem to bring revival doesn't it it really does and it does seem to allow the holy spirit to move freely you yeah. know and our tendency is we want to uh control things don't we we, 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 <laughs> should, yeah. we don't we don't want to embrace the mess I, i'm a big rick warren fan and i like that he says you know uh, ministry's messy and we experiment you know we're, we're a new church so we try stuff and you know if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go back and do right. that or whatever. But we don't have to have a, a form, a fixed formula or whatever, just to let We've God. We've got to move. do what nobody's ever done to reach people no one's ever reached. The, it's I always, love that. Yeah, it's I new. love that. I love that. Uh, again, it's you, you, it's free. You're going to have a, the registration. Is it open yet, or is that? Uh, if they, yeah, if they will, again, they can go to. Uh, the, uh, yeah. If they'll if they'll go to EP Jesus Movement at Gmail, they'll send us an email. Again, we also have our Facebook page. If okay. you just look up, look up El Paso Jesus. We're, we're hosting it on, on our Heart for the World global website. Okay. So HFT global, hftwglobal.com. Mm -hmm. But it's just free. But we would love for you to give us information, especially some of you. Maybe someone's listening. They have a testimony. Yes. How God touched them. And we would love you to tell us your testimony. If you have pictures of some of that, uh, send those to us. Yeah. And I think it's going to be an incredible time of just bringing everyone together. You mentioned about the life rafts, and and I, I felt this many years ago, praying with some pastors, that the Lord said that you know there's no competition. That it's going to be like when when Jesus said, "Throw your throw your net on the other side of the boat." They had to call the yes. other boats. Yes, they had to we're, call. We're, we're not going to, any church in El Paso is not going to have room for all the people that are getting saved. We're going to need every boat we can. Amen. And it's just having that expectation and that faith for a real revival. Can we just declare it that 2021 is a year of a fresh move of the Holy Spirit? Amen. And where the enemies come in and, you know, this whole pandemic was so demonic and all of that. But it's the perfect time for people to come back to the Lord. Amen. A perfect time for people to come back to the Lord. I love that. I love that. So the registration, uh, uh, tell us, uh, well, let me see. I've got something in my notes here. The impartation service, you're going to... Uh, uh, and I can talk a little bit yeah, about, more about impartation. Yeah, poor, talk about impartation. Again, I think that's an anointing of yours and... Uh, uh, some of the things you believe God wants to impart, yeah. especially to younger folks, you know, you know, they don't have mortgages and <laughs> car yeah. payments and stuff like that. Do it now, do it now, go, yeah. you know, so, do something different with your life or whatever, but go ahead. I see so many wonderful places in scripture. You know, I tell this story because it, it moves me a lot, but, uh, my mom, Fred and Eileen Walker, they, my dad was pastor of Jesus Chapel at East Side for many years, and he's still alive, my hero. My mom passed away in 2013. I had a, an experience where I was uh, at Easter time. I wanted to go visit her grave, and I just wanted to begin to thank the Lord for, mm -hmm. for the fact of the resurrection. Uh, but as I was worshiping the Lord, I felt a tremendous 
a tremendous sense of the Holy Spirit so so powerfully. I just began to weep and mm -hmm. and, and I began to worship and I'm just laying there. The the guy in the cemetery drove by thinking I needed <laughs> Uh, some you know, tranquilizers. I don't know. <laughs> they were worried about me. But no, I was just having a glorious experience with the Lord. And the word that I felt in my heart was, Dale, you know legacy doesn't end. The prayers that were prayed, they still have effect. Yes. Even far beyond Amen. the lifetime of the individual. And, and he began to remind me that, that what, what was stirred up is still available. Mm. The, the work of the Holy Spirit and often it, it's just a matter of us reaching out and claiming the, the blessings that those people who've gone before us have labored for, have planted seed for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just felt like God saying, everything that I started to do is still on the table. Wow. And it's on the table to do press down, chain and running over. The uh, Elijah's mantle is now going to be Elisha's mantle, double portion of the Holy Spirit. The whole idea that Joshua is, is, is ready. God always has a, a greater thing that he's trying to impart to people. Paul would do it continuously. He would, he would give prophetic words to Timothy. He says, don't forget, you know, in, in 1 Timothy 1.12, the prophetic words that were spoken to you. Yes. This is how you're going to fight the good fight. Yes. Go back to those words. And I know the words that were spoken over me as a young person, uh, again, just not knowing anything, but those older people spoke over me and, and, and told me, why don't you go win a city for Jesus? And I believed I could. Wow. And so I believe that there's these gifts, latent gifts or un, what you would call unharvested, unstirred up gifts, like, you know, like coals that have gone out or never been stirred up in the hearts of people. And it's one of the biggest burdens I have to just call it out of them. Yeah. To call out that. And when you do that, I have seen incredible things. I've been prayed for uh, and prophesied over, the, and people spoke to me. Uh, the Lord wants to give you nations. Wow. I remember, uh, I, I, of course, went over for 30 years. I would go back and forth to the Philippines and preach the gospel. Well, that started uh, when I first went. My, mm. Some people had said, my mother gave me this mantle of a, Filipino Barong and said, I saw this 20 years ago. You would go there. <laughs> and so all that to say, there's mantles to be given out and stirred up. And that's what that Sunday night's all about. Amen. Well, you've stirred my heart to be expected. I'm going to close in prayer. Thanks, Dale, so much. The, again, more information, the page, the web page again? Are they? Well, if they could email epjesusmovement at gmail.com. All right. God bless you, El Paso, Las Cruces. In Jesus' name, amen.